everybody and in today's video I'm very excited to be showcasing this all new P. Moriat Kirk Whalem Signature Tenor Neck and I'm going to be comparing it and contrasting it with a standard neck that would come on a P. Moriat 66 RUL. Now the general subject of the neck is often one that's neglected in the sense that we're often talking about mouthpieces, uh, ligatures and reeds and of course saxophones but this bit in the middle just gets left out of the conversation all too often. And so it's really great that we now have the opportunity to discuss um, a, a new neck on the market essentially. So thank you P. Moriat for bringing out this super new neck. And Kirk Whalem was involved in the collaboration process with uh, P. Moriat on this. And he is super excited and charged about this neck. He absolutely loves it. And for, for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure most of you do, Kirk Whalem is an absolute wonderful sax player, he's a proper legend, um, played with the likes of Whitney Houston and many other artists, um, so he really knows what he's talking about, so I'm really excited to get into this. The neck itself is beautifully presented in this nice cardboard box here, and as we slide it open we can see we have further goodies, not just the neck itself, we've got a pouch here, we've got a little testimonial from Kirk himself on a card there, and as we get into it, you can see it's beautifully fitted inside there. Now, the design of this new neck is based on the standard Super 6 uh, Moriat neck design, which is the neck that they use on all of their modern uh, P. Moriat instruments. Uh, but what makes it stand out, obviously, first of all, is this silver plated finish. Um, but also, um, another standout feature, obviously, is this dual bracing design here which not only gives it some extra um, sort of solidity in terms of its uh, construction and that feeling that when you're putting it on the instrument it's not going to yield at all, which I think is very important for tenor players, um, but also the, the notion that we're um, transferring sound from this part of the neck to this part of the neck, um, I would imagine that it's going to have some acoustic benefits, so we're going to find out in a minute. Um, but essentially the actual um, material that it's made from is yellow brass, but as I say, just with this silver plated finish. But aside from the basic spec of the neck, there's a lot of handwork that goes into producing a bespoke neck of this quality. So we're gonna play it now and see how it fares. So what I found with this new neck is that it offers another whole spectrum of sound on top of the standard neck, which is a really wonderful neck that comes with the 66R. And for me, there are lots more brights and highs in the sound. It really sings and sizzles there. And at the same time, it's got a lot more volume and shout. I find that I can really push it, so there's the free blowing qualities in it are really apparent to me as a player. And within that, because it's so free blowing, it allows me to 
kind of continue the playing and not lose any of the sound quality as I'm going through the phrases. It just holds on and latches onto my playing and just gives me that feeling of, sort of support that you kind of need as a player. So it kind of works for me in that sense. It's working for me as a player. But I really enjoy that extra gear that it gives you, that extra volume and power that's there at the top. And within that, um, I can hear an immediate brightness, certainly here in the room, when I'm really pushing it, that sizzle, as I say. Um, and I did actually just have a listen back to my sound clips just to see how it translates when it goes through the audio interface and all the rest of it. And to a lesser degree, I was hearing that because, of course, the player's experience is one thing and the listen experience is another thing, but I could still hear it clearly on those uh, um, audio signals. So I'd be interested to see what you guys think when you have a listen back. But then another element to it as well, and this is why I played those softer clips for you, is that when you really lay it back, um, there's a sense that there's a sort of richness and a sort of complexity in the sound and a softness that also works for you as a player. And so I really enjoy kind of dropping back to the sort of ballad style of playing and just feeling like, again, the sound is free blowing and it's just oozing through the instrument without having to work as quite as hard as I did on just the standard 66 R neck. So I suppose in that sense, in in the sense that we're playing with dynamics here, the quiet dynamics, it's really working for me there and I'm really enjoying what it's doing. But when you really push it, at the same time you get those interesting uh, sound effects, the notion that the sound just opens up and becomes bigger and brighter and bolder. And of course you've got everything in between as well. And it's also worth saying that um, because it's a different neck to this one, you kind of need to spend time getting into it because uh, you know, when you play a neck like this for, I don't know, half an hour a day for um, two or three weeks or even longer, you just find more going on in it than you would do just from that first blast when you go A, B, A for five minutes, when it can be very confusing, you know, you're swapping around your read, you're not quite sure what you're hearing. Um, but I, I sometimes think that as players, when we're dealing with, um, you know, pieces of craftsmanship like this, to really get into it and find those sort of nuances in the sound, it's just worth having that sort of prolonged um, kind of playing experience. Uh, and that's what I found with this over the few days that I've been trying it. The, the more I try it, the more I get into it and get a feeling for the neck. Um, so overall, um, I think that P. Moret have done a really great job with this. And um, okay, it's perhaps on the pricier side, but this is a premium product. So that's what we'd expect. Now, in terms of the fit with the saxophone, clearly I've been demoing it on the P. Moret, which makes sense because it has the bore geometry of uh, the Super 6 neck, and so it's all gonna work intonation-wise. Uh, P. Moret do say themselves that because of its sort of standard tenon sizing here, that's 27.5 millimeters, it will work on other brands of saxophone. And I've done a brief test, I've not done a playing test, but it certainly fits on a, a standard Yanagazawa. So what I would say is, yes, you can do that, but I would exercise caution when doing so, because you are dealing with a different bore geometry on this part versus the bore geometry on another brand like a Yanagazawa. Um, so I would suggest that if you're considering, um, you know, sort of combining um, the different manufacturers and your saxophone setup, always come to our store and try it out for yourself to see if it really is working for you in every aspect, including the intonation. Um, but aside from all of that, the way it works and blends with the P. Moriat, as I hope you've um, heard and enjoyed yourself, um, is wonderful. Uh, I think they've done a great job here and I can really see why Kirk loves this neck himself.